Hey everybody, Hunter back again from Showtime Studios. Uh, seems like there was a lot of interest in the um, super detailing of the dash that I did on the 359 Peterbilt. So we're going to work on a uh, tutorial series, uh, probably be four or five parts by the time that we're done with it. Uh, just to let everybody know uh, on the dash that I showed you on the earlier video, which is this one here. Um, that actually took uh, from start to finish about five hours including the wood graining and we'll hold it up here and see if we can get a little bit better shot of it there we go that's uh, that's about five hours worth of work all together um, you know counting drying time and stuff like that but that's pretty much a finished product I've got one more coat of uh, future to put across the gauges to flatten out the uh, the lenses a little bit more um, if I hold it there, you can kind of see there's a little bit of waviness in the uh, in the uh, lenses themselves. So one more coat will take care of that. But uh, we're gonna in this video, we're just gonna do the introduction to it and go through what all I use to uh, create that look on that dash. So uh, to start out with, uh, let's see. The first thing that you're gonna need on the list, of course, is a dash, and uh, there's you know some dashes that will work with this technique uh, some that will work well with it others won't and what I'm talking about is uh, this dash here is a dash just like the one that we did uh, this is another 359 Peterbilt dash and this has it's pretty flat and it has um, very nice uh, detail on the gauges and I know it might be a little difficult to see because my camera has a hard time focusing in on something close to it like this. But uh, this is the same one that that I showed in the earlier video and just showed you there before this. Um, that's the same exact dash, just in kit form. And the next dash I want to show you is, uh, this is actually an Italeri dash. And uh, I had a message sent to me about somebody that was uh, ordered this kit and was going to be... Uh, wanting to know how to do this for this dash now uh, something that you need to take in consideration uh, This is a more modern kit and you can see how crisp and clean the detailing is on this dash But if you look real close at the small gauges on there, you will notice there's no detail work in them uh, It's just basically a bezel So the center gauge there would come out real good even though the numbers are actually dots uh, it would come out good as far as the technique that we're going to use on this and you know if you just wanted to put a black wash down in those small gauges and dry brush the bezels that would be okay uh, most of the time on these dashes here I will keep uh, this section right here underneath of my finger and I will dry brush all of that and then all of the gauge area over here I will actually shave that off and use the decal um, but you know it kind of depends on what you're looking for but just remember that some dashes are not going to have the uh, real detailed gauges in them so you know you have to look at that to begin with uh, to make sure it's going to be worthwhile and that's what you're going to need to look for as far as, as choosing a dash to do this with like I say not all dashes you're going to be able to do this uh, technique but once you've chosen your dash and you you know set it in your mind that that's the one you want to do uh, the next on the list is the quarter inch flat brush. Uh, this is going to be used for dry brushing. And I also have a half inch wide flat brush here that I will use for dry brushing. And the next thing that we're going to use is some enamel chrome silver from uh, Model Master. There it is. And uh, I like to use the enamels for my dry brushing. I have a lot better luck with it. But uh, as we go along in the videos, I'll give you some ins and outs on, you know, using the enamel over using acrylics. Uh, there's, it, for me, it turns out very well, but uh, there is a point of um, in there that you can make a big mistake and have to go back and redo everything you've done before. But we'll touch on that as I get to that part uh, in the series. And the next thing we're going to be using is some uh, future floor wax. And I just take it out of the big bottle and put it over into this small one to use here on the bench. Uh, you're going to be using some um, enamel thinner to clean out your brush uh, from the dry brushing. We're also going to be using uh, Vallejo uh, acrylics for the uh, basically doing the black wash. And what I've done is I've mixed that up in this little uh, Vallejo bottle here. 
Uh, this is a cross between a black and a, and a dark gray. It's kind of in the middle and uh, not quite as black as just solid black out of this bottle here. So it looks a little bit more realistic. And uh, I'll show you what all we go through as far as thinning this and, and how I work with it to uh, get your initial uh, black wash down. And we also have some uh, brown here. It's actually a black brown that I use for the uh, wood graining. And uh, after we get done with the gauge tutorial, then I will go on to do the wood graining because I've had a couple people ask me uh, about doing that. So we'll do that in the second part of it. And of course, you're going to need a cup of water uh, for your acrylics and you know cleaning your brushes out and stuff when you're using those. And uh, some mixing cups. Now what these are, these are actually uh, five ounce cups that comes from Walmart. I think they're about a dollar or dollar fifty, something like that for a big pack of them. And I just go ahead and cut them down just to give me a little, uh, just something to keep some paint and water in and do some mixing. And when I'm done with the project, I can just toss these. So I actually have uh, three of them already cut up here on the bench and ready to go. So that comes in pretty handy. Now you can also use a mixing palette if you want to. Um, I'm just not a big fan of, I tend to leave them set to the side and the paint dries in them and then they're a bear to get cleaned out. So I like to use these little throwaway cups. And uh, let's see, the next thing, just make sure that you have something to be able to set your, um, your dash on as the black wash and the different stages are drying to make sure that it sets level on your workbench. And uh, when we do the second part of this video, which will be uh, applying the black wash into the gauges, I'll show you the little jig that I have set up here, which is nothing but uh, two tires uh, actually out of the California hauler kit. And uh, that's what's propping the dash up to uh, keep it level. And that keeps the uh, black wash from running downward in the gauges. Uh, so you have to make sure it sets level. And uh, other than that, you're just going to need a piece of, uh, you know, shop towel or paper towel, whatever you use. I use these blue shop towels. We'll be tearing a piece of that off to uh, get rid of some excess uh, black wash that goes in the gauges. And uh, other than that, that's about it as far as materials for doing this. And I don't know if, no, I didn't show the Sharpie. And I'm also going to be using a red Sharpie on this. And uh, I use this in the, uh, in the needles. Uh, but you could use uh, orange or, you know, whatever color you really choose um, to do the uh, needles. I don't do the lettering or the numbers with this. That's all done with the uh, with the first black wash coat, and I'll show you how that comes out. So, but other than that, that's about all there is to it as far as materials. So, um, if anybody is following along with this uh, series, just uh, go ahead and get all those supplies and have them ready. And the way I'm going to break it down is I will be going through on the first step, uh, which will be part one, and we will do, be doing the black wash inside the gauge bezels itself. And then that will be the end of that part, and we'll let that dry. And the reason why I want to do that is anybody that's following along, you know, grab a dash and follow along with the, the tutorial. And that way, as we set things over to the side, uh, they're drying. And that way, you're not trying to rush anything. And then we'll come back and we'll do the, uh, the next step and the next step, but we'll leave it set overnight. Uh, you don't have to do it that way, but, um, you know, like I say, I did that dash that I showed you in about five hours. Uh, with drying time, but uh, we're just going to go ahead and do it overnight so I can do a, a part each evening and uh, We'll get the whole series wrapped up this coming week. So uh, stay tuned for that and uh, maybe at the end of this um, If everybody's interested, uh, you know, even starting out grab yourself a dash and follow along and do the same steps that I'm doing and see how you like it and at the end uh, maybe we can display uh, have everybody display on video their their finished product and if there's anything that you know, you ran into a problem with or whatever, just, uh, you know, let me know, ask me to watch the video or whatever, and I'll watch it and see if uh, I can tell you, you know, any pointers or whatever on how yours turned out, if you can do it a little bit better or, or what have you. So, uh, but anyway, it should be a fun little uh, tutorial, so stay tuned, and like always, I thank you for watching and supporting Showtime Studios, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.